What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Fred and we are pushing forward on the 240SX project today. Uh, I think all I can really get done today is probably work on this turbocharger and get it out um, and see if we can test fit the new VS Racing 7870, or excuse me, the new VS Racing S485 and see if it fits in the place of the 7875. Uh, I'm pretty sure it will approximately fit, but I think the snout of the new turbo, the inlet, is going to hit the radiator support. So that's probably the biggest problem I'm facing right now as far as fitting the new turbo. Uh, weather is totally crap outside. We're getting a snowstorm as we speak. We've had an ice storm all week in front of that. So getting out of here and getting my uh, compressor cover machined is going to be a no-go for a few days. Plus I'm waiting on some parts still from UPS to get here that got sent to the wrong spot. Um, so I'm kind of getting screwed on weather and parts, but I'm trying to make all the progress I can on the car here while everything's more or less shut down and I've got some time to work. So Okay, so before I can pull the turbo off, um, I think I said this in another video, but this downpipe, if I take the da uh, turbo off, the downpipe kind of flops around and can move. So I need to make a bracket to hold this downpipe in space rigid so I can pull the turbo out and the downpipe will stay right where it's at while I figure out how to fab up the new turbo mounting. This downpipe, the clearance is so close to the frame rail and the starter down here that I don't want it moving at all. It's right where I want it. So I'm afraid if I just go tearing turbo off, I'm going to screw up that clearance and I'm going to have more issues with the exhaust rubbing the frame rail down there, which I've already resolved all those issues in the past. So uh, I don't want to have to go through that again. So I need a bracket to make this downpipe rigid. So that's what I'm working on here. So I have cut this tab right here and bolted it into this coil bracket. It's nice and stiff. And then I think what I'm going to do, I've been looking at this for like half an hour trying to decide how I want to make a bracket here. Best solution I could come up with here was to uh, do a tab right there and then I think I'm going to use this round rod that I've got a bunch of. This is the same stuff that I made my headlight mounts out of. It's just solid like quarter inch round rod. Um, it's actually, yeah, quarter inch round rod. And so I think I'm just going to take two pieces of it and weld right to this tab. So weld one up there coming out at this angle. And then weld one on this side coming out at this angle and then weld them straight to the downpipe and then keep them probably as short as possible and make them intersect into the downpipe kind of down in here somewhere not over the top I want to make it at least visible you know so I don't want welds up here on the top I want the welds to be down here if at all possible so probably run these round rods something like this one here and then one over here and then that'll just be my downpipe bracket and then I'll possibly just trim off any excess that's up here that doesn't need to be there after I'm done. So I think that's going to be the best solution and still look okay and, and uh, actually look, I think it'll look pretty cool if it comes out right. So I think that's what I'm going to do and get that, get that built and get this downpipe rigid and then I can pull the turbo off here. Um, yeah. So this is pretty much what I've come up with. Uh, I decided to go ahead and bend that bar and make it out of one piece. It'll be easier to weld and just easier to fabricate all the way around. Just look better, I think. So that's kind of how that came out. Um, just need to fine tune it a little bit, clean all the metal up, and then weld it in place. But I don't know. I think it looks pretty cool. Definitely kind of different. Um, I really like working with round rod to make brackets and things. You see that a lot of race cars, so it kind of gives it a race car look, in my opinion. Definitely not something you see every day on a street car. You can see my headlight brackets that I tacked up the other day are in place there. So maybe as time goes on, I'll start doing more and more uh, with the round rod for bracketry and stuff on this car, and maybe even some of my other projects. Maybe that'll be kind of my thing that I do on my cars. Who knows? But uh, I think it looks pretty cool. It'll definitely do the job for now anyway, and it'll locate that downpipe like I want. So yeah, I think I'm going to go with it. So I got her welded in there. At least tacked in place really good. Nice solid tacks everywhere. I will do a little more welding on this. Um, I might wait until I have this downpipe out where I can access uh, the bottom and the back side of these better and get a really nice bead all the way around and then get a bead on the bottom side of that. But for now, uh, for our purposes here today and as far as removing this turbo this week, uh, that's going to do the job and I think it looks pretty cool. So that was a win. Um, it's a good deal. I think I'm going to stop for today here. It's actually getting late in the day on a Sunday. I didn't get much done today, but that was a big step. It was not a, uh, a lot of work, but it was an important step that had to get done. So that's done now. So now I can pull the turbo off. Uh, no problems. Everything will stay where it's supposed to be. And then we can start fitting in the S485. And I was looking at it earlier, uh, the turbo over there on the bench. And it's looking like the downpipe uh, might be in the same location 
the down, excuse me, the outlet, the turbine outlet on that turbo might be in the same location as the turbine outlet on this turbo. And if it is, and all that works out perfect, I may not even have to modify this downpipe at all. Um, I figured I was going to have to. I was certain I was going to have to, but um, it looks like maybe I don't. So we'll know once we get this turbo off and try to mock some things up. But if I don't have to modify this flange or this location of this flange, then that will save me a ton, and I mean a ton of work. I'm definitely going to have to cut this T4 flange off and weld on the uh, V-band flange. So I don't think I can get away uh, from that. So that'll have to happen. But anyway, yep, good step forward today. I think that's uh, going to be a good place to kick it off. I don't know if I'm going to tie this into tomorrow's video and make it one big video or not. I suppose I'll just decide that in a little bit. Okay, it's a new day and we're back at it again in the shop. You can see what's going on outside, just like a lot of you out there. We're getting snow and crazy weather. I think we've had about four or five inches here in Missouri. I've had my shop heat blowing for over 48 hours straight and that's as warm as it can get it in here. Um, but that's better than nothing, so I'm not gonna complain about that. Um, so this is where I left off yesterday. I got the downpipe brace built, at least the first version of it. Um, I may revise that. I'm thinking I'll probably want to add another, a third leg onto this at some point. Maybe, maybe not. That that actually may end up being temporary. I may actually just use that until the turbos, new turbos mounted and done, and then I may just cut that off. Um, haven't really decided. We'll see how I like that in the end. That's kind of a, I'm iffy on whether that's going to be a permanent feature of this or not. I like it, but I don't know. We'll see. Make up my mind later on that. But now. With that thing installed, I can take the turbo out and the downpipe will stay where it's supposed to be. So nothing left to do really but get the oil lines off of this, take the downpipe flange off, and uh, unbolt it from the exhaust and get the 7875 out of there. Um, it's kind of sad in a sense that turbo is coming out for the last time. It's been a good turbo for me for a long, long time. Made 870 horsepower at 20 PSI on the engine dyno when I had this engine, uh, this entire setup pulled out of here last year, hauled it all over to an engine dyno bolted it up to the engine dyno, made 870 at 20 PSI, made over 900 pounds of torque multiple times on the dyno at as low as like 3,500 RPM. So incredible results from that turbo. Uh, but turbine housing, excuse me, the turbine wheel is just too small to go much further than that on an engine this big. So going up to bigger turbo, but uh, yeah, been a good turbo, super awesome incredible value per dollar on that turbo i think you can buy that turbo for about 550 bucks right now sometimes maybe even cheaper on sale um, and they last really good they spill really fast and they make all that power so uh, not a lot to complain about on that unless you're trying to go even faster which we are so anyway time to get that dude out of there and start market start mocking up a uh, big berth over here the s485 Okay, so this is the new turbo, and we got some good news and some bad news. Good news is, I think it's going to clear the fender well without me having to dent this in at all, which is okay if I do ultimately have to dent it in, no biggie, but it looks like it's either going to be not dented in at all or just a tiny, tiny bit. So that's good. Um, bad news is, this flange and this flange are different diameters for some reason. They're both 4 inch, but they're not 4 inch on the outside. so. Uh, not going to be as simple as bolting this one to that one with a clamp and being done, unfortunately. So um, this is going to have to change in some way. So yeah, but it looks like it basically fits in the space pretty well. Um, I've got to cut off the uh, T4 flange and then weld on the V-band flange to mate up here. And I've got to get that spacing and distance just right so that uh, the center line of these two diameters stays lined up. So that's the next job. I think I'm going to take the whole center housing out so that I'm just working with the turbine housing now. Um, I don't need this here in the way, and this is real fragile and I don't want to hurt it. So 
Uh, take the turbine housing off, put this away somewhere, and then just start working with the turbine housing only. Okay guys, so here is where I'm going to leave it for the day. I was able to get the uh, flange, T4 flange cut off the uh, up pipe here and weld on the V-band flange and get everything loosely mocked up and tacked in place. So that's a fantastic place to call it good for the day. Uh, things are actually lining up better than I thought they would. Uh, the body does clear down here. I didn't have to clearance anything. I started to thinking I was going to have to. I uh, didn't actually bend anything at all and ended up not, not even needing to. There is some gap right there. Um, downpipe lines up actually way better than I thought it was going to. Uh, the positioning is pretty much fantastic. I just need about a 5 8 filler here and uh, you know it's about all you can ask for right there. So not too bad. Um, looking pretty good. I think I'm gonna call it off for there or right there for the day. Um, yeah looking good. I'm happy with this. It's all working out. I'm encouraged. Things are working out a little bit better than I expected. The compressor housing, once I install it, is most definitely going to still hit here, as far as I can tell, although I haven't tried it today. But um, So this is going to be something that has to be modified here. And then where the uh, compressor outlet fires is going to be who knows where. So this is going to have to be cut out some more, no doubt. But uh, yeah, I'm really happy with the way things are coming along here, making some progress best I can. So thanks, guys, for watching. Follow along with the project. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. And uh, uh, if you have any questions, just ask me down below. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to follow along with the project this year, give me a sub. Otherwise, guys, I will see you next time.